Welcome back everybody, it's great to have you here again. After we created our course categories in the previous video, it is now finally time to create our first courses. Just like when creating the categories, we're going to click on the site administration button and then select courses from the top bar. When we then click on manage courses and categories, we can see all the categories that we created on the left hand side. But there are no courses yet. We can see that by the number zero in front of all the graduation caps. In order to create a course, you first want to select the category that the course should be stored in. In my case, let's say I want to create a math course for my January intake in the morning. So I click on the exact category and the selected category will be displayed on the right side. Then you click on create new course and we can start with the details of the course. First thing, you have to provide two names for your course, the course full name and the course short name. The course full name is displayed on the top when you are within the course. Let me just show you how it looks once the course is created. So we would be within the course now and you can see the full name up here, while the short name is in the breadcrumbs down here. These breadcrumbs show you the exact position within your Moodle site, so that means we clicked on home, clicked on my courses and then clicked on this particular course here. When you go to your dashboard to find a course that you enrolled in, you can also see the full name here. So the short name is actually the name that the Moodle database uses to identify your course, while the full name is the name that users see. Now let's go back to our settings. So we're going to provide the full name now. Let's say Math for Beginners. And then we give it a short name, which is usually a short form of the full name that makes sense. So we can say MFB for Math for Beginners. And I usually give it a unique number so you don't get confused with all your other courses that you might have. You could, for example, just put a one after the name. And um, that's for the first course. And when you create the second course, you're just going to put a two and so on and so on. Uh, one important thing to mention here is that all the details that we're providing right now can be changed and edited later. So don't feel any pressure that you're doing something wrong, okay? Now that we've provided the names, we can see the course category. Since we already selected the course category before, it is displayed correctly here. But you can always change the category by selecting one from the drop-down menu. And this menu displays all the categories that you've created before. When you create new courses, you should always have the visibility on hide. That there is no chance that students can see and access the course while you're actually still working on it. So at the moment it wouldn't really matter because we haven't enrolled any students yet. But if you have students enrolled in a course and you want to work on the course, you know, to still do stuff, maybe put it on hide. What that simply means is that students can't see the course while teachers and admins can access the course and therefore can work on it without having students, you know, see what's going on. Now the course start date is not as important as it sounds because as long as you have the visibility on show, all enrolled students can access the course even when the course start date is in the future or way in the past. However, the course start date determines where to find a course in the dashboard. Let me show you that quickly as well. If I put a future date as starting date, the course can be found under the future filter in the dashboard. If I put a date in the past, it's obviously under the past filter. To be honest, it doesn't really matter too much because you can simply set all and it shows all the future and also the past courses alike anyway. Another thing with the course start date is that if you have a weekly format for your course, which we can determine a little bit further down here, course format, weekly format, the first week that gets displayed shows the course start date. Let me show you how that looks as well quickly. So we are in the course now and you can see the first section here is the start date that I selected. And then when we add sections, it just adds the dates accordingly. Now let's go back to our settings again. So yeah, back in the settings now, if you don't have a strict starting date, just put yesterday dates or something and don't worry about it anymore. The same actually goes for the course end date. As I said before, the start and end date doesn't restrict students from accessing the course. It simply determines under which filter it's being displayed on the dashboard. So a course where the end date has passed could be found under the past course filter as I shown you before. Therefore, if you like, you can even disable 
the course end date. However, if you tick this box here, calculate the end date from the number of sections, the end date is automatically calculated by how many weeks you add to your course. This is again only applicable to the weekly format down here, right? Let me just show you this as well quickly. So this as before is the course in the weekly format and we can add weeks. I'll just do that quickly. So let's say we add two weeks. And when we had the end date before the 14th of February, the end date of the course would now be 28th of the February and that would be automatically adjusted in the settings. Okay, and back to our settings page again. So course ID number is something that you really don't have to worry about too much because it's mainly used to identify the course for external systems. So when you link your course to other systems outside of the Moodle environment, which to be honest is usually only done by large institutions, right? For example, when you have registered your course with an official institution or something. So we just leave it blank. We can now provide a short description of what the course is all about. That course description can be seen in the dashboard overview again. So let's switch to the dashboard quickly. So you see the course here in the dashboard, but the summary is only displayed when the display style is set to summary. If you like to add a description to your course, then keep the description short. Otherwise, the list of courses gets really, really long and users have to scroll endlessly. And we go back to our settings now. So one thing that might really make sense to differentiate your courses in the dashboard is adding an image. You can either drag and drop an image into this field here, or you can click on the empty field and then choose an image from your computer. Just be aware that Moodle most likely will cut away a few parts from your image and will only take the center part of it, okay? So if you like, you can create a little white box around your actual image to avoid having important parts cut off. Now let's come to the format options. They are really important. So you can pick from a few options that determine the layout of your course. The weekly format, we've seen that before, divides your course into weeks. The weekly format then again gives you two additional options down here. I mean, it's almost annoying with all these options, but um, listen, in most cases, just leave everything as it is. Moodle just offers way too many options, all right, that don't apply for most users. Uh, but anyway, you can hide sections from your students if you are maybe still working on a particular section and you don't want students to see it. You could either have these sections displayed in a collapsed form or you can hide them entirely, which I would recommend. The course layout determines if you want to have all sections on one large page to scroll through, okay? Or if you want to have these sections with all the resources on different pages for users to click through, like in a book, for example. Uh, I always have it on one page. It just gives a nicer overview, in my opinion. The topic format here is very similar to the weekly format, but instead of having the weekly dates for the different sections, we have topic one, two, three, four, five. I'll just show that quickly to you as well. So remember, we had the weeks here before. Now it just says topics instead of it. Let's just turn editing off. It's nicer to see. And let's go back to the other settings. So topic and weekly format, these are the major formats. And to be honest, the other two I've never really seen used before. They're actually pretty unnecessary, but I'll show you quickly anyway. The social format simply displays a forum on your course page. So you don't even have a description around it or anything. It simply displays a forum. And the single activity format here only allows you to add one single resource on your entire course page which you can select from here. So I could, for example, go ahead and just have a lesson activity and that's my entire course. But we're gonna put it back on our weekly format because that's a lot nicer. Let's have a look at appearance now. Force language, so leave it as it is because it just changes the language of all those buttons and everything here. So obviously you wanna keep it in your current language and that is fine. Number of announcements, so in your course, you have a communication tool that is called Announcement Forum, which is automatically created when you create a new course. And in this kind of special forum, you can place news or general information for the entire class that is then displayed for everyone in a block called the latest announcement block. Let me just show you how this works quickly. So this is the announcement forum itself, which is automatically created. And if I turn editing on and add a block, I can add the latest announcement block here. All right, 
here in this latest announcement block shows the announcements that you put in the special forum here. So in the settings, as we've seen before, you can select the number of announcements that you want to show in that particular block. If you select one, it only shows one announcement here, even though you might have four or five or six announcements in the forum itself. So I would say I would say two announcements, that's the number I would recommend. If you don't want to use the announcement forum at all, you can just put it at zero and the whole announcement block just disappears from your course. Next is show gradebook to students. If you have selected yes, students have an icon in their left hand menu here that you can see here, um, which brings them to a great overview of all their assessments. Having selected no entirely removes that icon from the students and therefore they can't see their grades. So I would always have it on yes. In my opinion, students have the right to see their grades. Now show activity reports. So there are reports of each and every participant in the course that helps you to see views and what people are doing and also do analysis and so on. So if you have show activity reports selected as yes, participants, so students can see their own reports they would just have to go to their own profile and under reports they can see what they're actually doing in the course. If no is selected, um, the reports simply don't show up in their profile. I would personally suggest to have it on no because it might be a bit distracting for students to check what has been recorded about them, etc. But to be honest, most students don't even know about the reporting option. So yeah, it's up to you. Now files and uploads. Participants can upload all different kinds of things to your course, whether it's through assignments or content to wikis or forum posts and so on. So you should limit that in a way that you don't go beyond your site capacity, which you can, by the way, look up here. All right. Now completion tracking. You might have seen that before when I showed your course in the dashboard overview, but I show you again. So there you can see a little completion bar for each course. Students can tick all the activities that they have completed throughout their course. And according to how many they have ticked, the progress bar fills up here. I think it's a very nice way to inform students how far they are in the course. Um, but if you don't like it, don't simply say no to enable completion tracking. So groups, unfortunately, is a huge topic and there's a whole video about it. So I will only touch on this very briefly. If you want to have any sort of group work in your course, like group assignments, group forums, certain material intended only for a particular group, um, you have to enable the group mode. And it gives you two options. Separate groups is the really strict option where students work in their own group and can only see content of their own group. While with visible groups, students still work in their own group, but they can also see what other groups are doing. Um, if you don't plan to have any students working in a group at all, just select no groups. However, if you select any of these separate groups or visible groups, you can force that group mode for all activities that you have set up in your course. So everything you do is basically done in groups. I would not recommend that. I would rather decide from activity to activity if it requires group work. We can't set default groupings because we haven't done any groupings yet. Don't worry about it. There is another video on that as well. Now we have two more options left and that's very easy ones. Role renaming. So within a course you can allocate different roles with different permissions to users during the enrollment process. So a student can for example look in a course but can't change anything on it because it's only a student. But if someone has a teacher role, that user can edit and add course materials, right? It's very obvious. And Moodle has also very obvious names for those roles, like teachers and students. If you still want to rename these roles because they just don't fit your purpose or whatever, you can just type in the role names that you prefer. So let's just say I want to call my students uh, minions. Um, you just type in here and the role permission, they stay the same, so they would still be students, obviously, but you as admin would see minions instead of students whenever you come across a role name, like, for example, in the participant page. But yeah, if you don't have to change it, just leave it as it is. And the last one is tags. So tags allow users to find courses using search terms that you can define here. For this course, for example, we would want to put a tag called math. 
So we type in math and click enter. Another one would, for example, be beginners and we click enter again. So this is how you can create different tags for your course. And if students then search for these terms, they will find easily what courses are related to it. Okay, Whew. that was a lot, but we're finally done. You know, we don't need most of these discuss options, but I just wanted to let you know all in detail. So once we're done, we just click on save and display, and our first course has been created and we're right in it few more important things. You can always change all the settings that we just discussed even when the course has already started. You just click on the gear icon up here and then click edit settings and you will see the familiar page that we just all went through. So yeah we have created a course now but how do we access it so we can work on it? Go to your dashboard and you will have your course overview. But oh, what happened? We can't see anything. Why is that? Because we are not enrolled in the course yet, the course overview only shows courses that you have an active role in as a student or a teacher or whatever. In other words, you need to be enrolled in the course. That's what we're going to do in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this, yeah, sorry, heaps long video, but I hope to see you again next time.